Hey, welcome back. This is not my shop. This is my video archive. Over the years, I piled up short video clips of projects, techniques, and stuff like that that never made it into an actual project video on my YouTube channel. So I decided to make a more or less regular segment on my channel where I dig out old footage do a voiceover comment to it and stitch it together to a uh, like 15 minute long video showing a few things like um, techniques tools and short projects um, th this is a little bit different than my shop talk shop talk is more like what's going on in the shop itself like um, new machines or stuff like that and this is really more um, techniques and small tools and stuff like that and a way to recycle old video footage so um, I will see how this works out by the ratio of thumbs up to thumbs down and also by the comments you drop down in the comment section this is a customer project where I needed some 40 millimeter precision holes in some cast iron blocks. And to speed up the process, I ordered a 38 millimeter annular cutter, and <laughs> that made quick work of those holes. Then I was able to finish those holes with a boring head to final diameter 40 plus. 02 millimeters using the quill feet of my milling machine of course such a boring head is way more rigid than a, a wool hop the boring head with an extended boring bar uh, the small diameter boring head can go in bore completely and stay very rigid Blasting in the holes for the mounting threads using a stub length drill held in a collet, very short, so I can go without um, center drilling. Always working against the stop and power tapping. These are blind holes, so I'm watching the depth stop and the indicator on the depth stop of my mill to get the right depth. These are the finished bearing blocks. I was making a rack for ER11 collets and I needed some 11mm holes, but I didn't have a drill bit for that. So I used a boring head in combination with a single flute and mill as an adjustable drill. And that worked very well. Setup is quite simple. You take a single flute and mill and you align it so it's in axis with the travel of your uh, boring head. So it's basically on center height, like you would set it up on a, uh, on a lathe to be a boring tool. And then you just plunge in. Uh, especially in plexiglass and acrylic and some other plastics, you have to be a bit careful um, if the cutting tool you're using is very sharp. It might corkscrew itself into the uh, material and cause a catastrophic crash. So I took a diamond home and I broke the cutting edge of this single flute end mill a little bit so it's um, a neutral cutting action. It's a scraping cutting action and that prevents it from grabbing into the material. Apart from that it's a very easy and fast way to drill holes of an uh, odd diameter. So I got this very nice tapmatic um, tapping hat, self-reversing type, 
um, for a very reasonable price from a fellow machinist here in Germany. Um, and I was looking for quite some time for one of these. Um, that's the smallest Tapmatic head. It has a range from as low as M1.4 up to M7. So that's quite a decent range of threads that you will find in uh, small mechanical devices. Um, M7 is obviously rather uncommon but M6 is uh, dirt common and you will find it anywhere. So I got this tapping head. Um, it came with all the collets. I think these are uh, Jacob style rubber flex uh, something something collets. Um, they consist of six steel blades held together by a rubber ring and they have they have a decent range. This one has a range from 2.5 millimeters up to 4.5 millimeters. So that's uh, two millimeters of range. And I got pretty much all collets that I need for uh, common threads that I use. <clears throat> and while I'm pretty proficient at tapping, power tapping on a mill just with the tap held in a collet, um, feeding along with the quill and then hitting reverse on the mill, um, sometimes when you do a very a large number of small threads in steel, preferable um, blind holds, um, a proper tapping hat with a clutch. This one has a clutch, so if you bottom the tap out, it, um, it skips, and then you reverse the tap out without turning the spindle of the mill on or off. And the way this works, you have this, um, this torque arm here on the side of the tapping hat, which looks a bit bodgy. I, um, this is welded on and this looks like somebody broke it off and re-welded it because the weld looks <laughs> quite terrible. Even for my standards in welding. Um, I might cut that off, clean it up and weld it on myself with the TIG and do hopefully a better job. Um, this torque arm provides a bearing for the tap head itself, for the internal mechanism. Um, the way these work, under compression they are drive-through. The, the tap down here spins the same direction as the, as the uh, spindle of the machine. When you When you pull, when there is pull on the tap and you reach a certain point, it reverses the drive and backs the tap out. And in practice you do that by um, pulling back the quill, the spindle gets pulled out and then it switches to reverse, which is uh, I think 1.5 times the speed of... Um, forward so um, it drives the tap out faster than it goes in which is also nice and very fast uh, but you need the torque arm to be stationary otherwise it doesn't work um, and you have this torque arm flinging around like crazy that <laughs> doesn't work either so um, what I'm using is I have a, a I have one of my indicator stands here with a dial pin and I let the torque arm ride up against this dial pin so it can slide up and down and it has a bearing. It helps if you engage the gear of the mill. So that's forward and when I pull It reverses just like this and you just saw this that my my uh, my indicator stand here slip this setup works only 
uh, for very light loads because the, um, the torque arm here will exceed all the torque of the tap out to the indicator stand and if you do threading like a six millimeter thread and tool steel um, you need something more solid than this guy here. So let's start out with something simple. Something simple like a M3 thread in O2 tool steel running at about 250 rpm and this is not a problem at all. I changed to an M2 tap here and I'm still tapping O2 tool steel and this is also not a problem at all. Just let the tap run in, pull the quill back and have the uh, tapping head all the reverse. I use a shot of compressed air to get rid of the chips that collect in the flutes of the tap. Those can be a problem when you power tap. At the end you saw the tap stop, that's when the clutch slipped through and stopped the spindle of the tapping head. This tool really makes fast work of small threads. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this first um, mix of footage. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.